Hi, my name is Rachel. I'm with Itoya, and I'm a bullet journalist. So what I'll be showing today is how you can bullet journal using Itoya's new Oasis notebook. I'll start with just the basic premise of the bullet journal, and then we'll talk about how you can get a little bit more creative with it. Uh, you can ignore what I have on the side of the page. We'll start here with an index. It's pretty straightforward. You're basically indexing everything that you have in your journal. From here, turn the page and you have what we call a future log. So in your future log, you list out some months. It can be anywhere between four to eight months so that you can track the things you're gonna do moving forward in the future. Uh, for me, I like to put people's birthdays, make sure that you don't miss them. That's something I do pretty frequently. If we keep turning here, you have your month. So this is the month of June and I have all of my days along with the days of the week next to them. This is where you would track what you have that day. So for me, I travel a lot. I would put maybe Texas for a couple days, whatever city I'm gonna to go to next. Then it's a quick glance, you can see everything you're doing. So the bread and butter of the bullet journal is really your tasks. On this side of the page, you would have all the tasks you wanna do throughout the month of June. But what I've actually done is I've listed out the shorthand which is used across all bullet journalists. So the first one is the actual bullet. This bullet is basically indicative of a task. Next down, you have the X, which means that you've completed your task. After that, you have a little arrow. This is for a task to be migrated if you don't finish what you're doing. Then you have another one for tasks that are scheduled on a specific date. You have a little tick here for notes and an open circle for events. After that, you do have the ability to signify on specific tasks. So you have an asterisk if you want to indicate priority and exclamation point for inspiration and an eye for any more information you might need on your task. This is your daily or your weekly log depending on how many tasks you have. So for me, this one is a couple of tasks a day. You can see I have an event on this day for my brother's birthday. You have a couple of tasks and then a note I took. Same thing across the rest of the week. The idea is you would do one day at a time and migrate tasks as you go through the days. The last piece of the bullet journal are what we call collections. So I have one right here for date night ideas, but collections are really just a fancy way of note taking. You can have a collection for habits, a collection for notes on the McPherson show, really anything you want. And the idea here is that once you finish this page, you can continue using your journal and you might have another one over here. And then you would index it so that you can find it later at the very front of the journal. So the next piece of this is exactly the same thing. It's just showing you what a creative might do with the same concept. So I have my index here. It's just the same thing with a little bit more color. This is my monthly log. I've only put four months instead of the eight. It's the same thing, but it has some tasks. It has the uh, calendar grid right here. It's really universal. You can do whatever you want with it. Moving right along, I have my month. I gave myself some goals at the end. Everybody does it a bit differently. And then I put a collection next to it with a habit tracker for all of those times that I don't go to the gym so I can motivate myself to do it later. Next page, I have my day log. I added some hours here so that I can see what events I have at what time. But other than that, pretty much the same thing. And then at the end here, I have a fitness tracker as a collection. And then I have a page which shows all the different markers that I like to use so I can test and make sure that they don't bleed through. I've done bullet journaling in probably every journal you can imagine, but this one has a couple of key advantages. Um, it's really lightweight, which I love. One of the best things about it is that it lies entirely flat, which is wonderful. Uh, people with left hand writing really seem to enjoy this. It also has this really interesting grid. So it has both lines and dots. The grid is cool for a few different reasons. If you're able to see this piece, I can make my letters the perfect size. I can also draw lines without needing a ruler, so that's the huge advantage there. Um, also, the paper is made in Japan. It's really good quality. Things don't seem to bleed through it at all, and it's very soft and easy to write on.